on the peace so that the judges did not know, and that's why none of their children won the prizes tonight. <laughs> but when you hear who the college and following are, you, you need to know that. Uh, so they were, uh, they were judged blindly. The winners, I'm not going to ask them to stand. I hope I can find the names of the winners here. Right? They may be by my, by my wife, but I have them here. Along with the check, uh, the award money. In the youngest category, the third place winner is Brendan Allison, $100. And Brendan, I understand, comes from the church in Redlands, California. Is Brendan here? I'll ask the youngest ones to stand up. I did meet you. Where are you, Brendan? Way up there. Thank you. <clears throat> then the second place winner in the youngest category is Miriam Kerner. And I think the Kerner family is over here. Miriam, stand up, please. And the first place winner in the youngest category is not here. He is the son of a preacher in Edgerton, Minnesota, Jonathan Lee. The next, thank you. The next category, I should know Judy does this well enough that they're color coded so I know what's first, second, and third without looking too hard. In the middle age category, the high school, I will read the names and then we'll applause after all three have been read. The third place winner is Sarah Duzema. The second place winner is Sydney Camps. And the third place winner is Rachel Camps. Applause for them. <laughs> On that other paper, probably over there, is the name of the church that they, these young people are from. I believe both Sydney and Rachel Camps are from Southwest, and I think that my wife is helping me, Sarah Duzma is from Holland. There we go. In the oldest category, we have four winners because there's a tie for third place. Tied for third place are Dale Skipper, from Southwest Church and Ryan Barnhill from Hudsonville Church, Southwest Protestant Reformed in Grand Rapids, Hudsonville in this area. Second place winner is Joshua Engelsma from Hope. He's the father of the new baby Calvin. And the first place winner is Eric Geikelar. Three of those in the top category our seminary students. We're very thankful that they put the work into this and did that. A couple of other notes very quickly. CDs and DVDs are available of all the, of the speeches. You may sign up in the back and you may buy some for friends or tell them about them too. Gary has talked about the books already. I want to remind you that specially produced for this 500th anniversary is this book by Professor Engelsma, The Reformed Faith of John Calvin. It's available here from the RFPA at a special conference price. I think it's about $25 and normally $35. Professor Engelsma worked like Calvin to get this finished for this anniversary. It's a summary, not an abridgment, of Calvin's Institutes. Calvin's magnum opus, the Institutes, are summarized in this book, which begins with a brief sketch of Calvin's life. It describes the nature of the Institutes. It has a history of the publishing of the Institutes, it describes the style and structure of the Institutes, it makes notes about the prefatory address, and then jumps into books one, two, three, and four, 
of the Institutes. I have talked to some of you who have already begun reading this book. It is readable, it is interesting, and we are very thankful for the work that Professor Engelsma has done for our churches and for the church world in producing the other books that he's written, but also now this one. Please pick up a copy from the book table in the back. Questions and answers, remember, will be taken and given tomorrow. And now we will read from the scripture from Galatians chapter 3. You have a different version in the pew. I will be reading from the King James Version, Galatians chapter 3, beginning at verse 15. Galatians 3, beginning at verse 15. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith, and to seeds as of many. And he, he saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law, it was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. May God bless the reading of his word. It's my privilege tonight to introduce our colleague, Professor Engelsma. Professor Engelsma has recently been declared emeritus in the Protestant Reformed churches. I use that word because some of you might suppose if I said retired that would mean that Professor Engelsma had stopped working. That's not true. The brother is still involved in very much work. He's uh, just returned a couple of weeks ago from a month in the Philippines lecture.